Hey Ron, how you doing? Steve Spencer here with SDS Construction. Isn't my smart wood shop beautiful? Well, I thought so. I really love it. I enjoy working out of it. But then I saw Steve Spencer's with SDS Construction. <sighs> you smart woodshop fam, you take these ideas and just go so much further than I have with them. I think you're gonna enjoy watching Steve's shop tour. He's got a beautiful trailer. It's really laid out nicely. And he doesn't have a shop. At his home, he works outdoors. His shop is outside. So it's either the smallest shop I've ever seen or the biggest. If you want to build a smart wood shop like this for yourself, or even take the ideas and improve on them like Steve has done, add a smart station, a smart workbench, a router table, a cradle to hold any of your benchtop tools like table saw, one of the carts, or any of the accessories that work for the system, there's a link in the description of this video down below where you can go purchase plans, either all of them or individually, and download them almost instantaneously, 24-7, 365. I'm an outdoor shop. Uh, I do not have anywhere indoors I can really set up. Uh, if I'm on a job site, of course, that's different. But when I'm around the house, which is where I am now, this is basically, if I'm going to work on my house or projects uh, for others that I can work here, this is the setup I have. So the first thing that I have is the fact that I have made miter extensions similar to what I saw in one of your early videos when you were doing story time. And because I, at this moment, do not have a total station, it is next on my build list for myself. But until then, this is what I have as far as to be able to allow me to cut long trim or anything long, I have the materials holders for this. So what I have next is what I would call my Polk semi-compact workbench. This thing is three feet wide. However, I made it seven feet long because I was really wanting that four by eight, the two piece, but I just did not have anywhere to store it nor transport it easily at the time. So I've had this thing about three years now and it has really performed. Ideally, because I almost always work by myself seemingly, I needed a table saw out feed. So I incorporated your early rail system in order to suspend the table saw and allow me to have that out feed. It has worked incredibly well compared with anything else I have derived on site with plywood and saw horses and, and everything else. So I'm very, very happy with that rail system. I am, however, looking forward to that new system. I believe I now have a source of lightweight plywood. I have an Amish cabinet builder that I work with quite frequently, and he indicates that he can find sheets of three-quarter ply at about 55 pounds a piece. I forget the name of the company nor the name of the brand of specifically of plywood. But once I get that, I'll post it somewhere when I have a chance, uh, spread the word. <laughs> when I get a hold of that plywood, then my next thing up is to build the actual, the total station and an additional compact bench. This thing here is about 100 pounds before you put anything below it. And so it is not a non-trivial thing to set up. I, I don't set this up. If I only need it for 15 minutes, I'll figure out something else. But if I'm going to be using it for a while, then there's no question. It goes up. I did incorporate uh, the sawhorse design from the total station because I had all three sets of the kind of version 2.0 plans. And I did also include the spreader, which has been invaluable to get these things dialed in right away. So when I lay this, uh, lay this bench down, that it just indexes right on the hinges and it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I love the material storage. That's why I went ahead with these as opposed to the other two designs. I love that material storage. It's just great. And unfortunately, I love the tool storage in here and I do have the 10, 10 inch box, but because of the rails, it really does limit what I can put in, especially on this side where the rail is very close to the edge. That side, I have a little bit more. Down on the other side, the rails aren't there. Uh, when it's fully extended, so I have all kinds of tool storage. So it's been beautiful. Love the dog holes. I drilled every single one of those, so it's it's like a rite of passage. So these are the two outdoor tools that I use, and what I have next is my smart trailer. So let's go in and take a look at that. So this trailer is a single 5,000 pound axle, six by 10 by six, and it has the Vinos, so I have the additional space up front, so I get 10 foot plus. And it has been a, a real treat to have this thing. So let me show you what it looks like inside. Sure. 
Opening it up, if I'm plugged into shore power, this is what it looks like. I do have LEDs that just pop right on when I plug into shore power. But I do have lights. The quick story behind this trailer is that I ended up getting a job out of state, significantly out of state down south. And I knew that I was going to be down for a couple of months doing this complete renovation on this townhouse. And I was going to have to take every tool that I owned with me. So I bought the trailer and then I looked around for ways to incorporate shelving. And that's when I discovered Ron Polk standing in front of his smart trailer. And that, of course, you know, was the start of it all and the end of it all. And so eventually I purchased the plans. I already had the trailer, realized what I needed to do, and I built it out. It was about two-thirds built out when I took it down south. But after that, when I brought it back home, I was able to complete the build out. And it's been, it's been just a uh, heaven sent ever since. So let me give you a quick fly around tour of this thing, show you what I've got going on. Let's go counterclockwise. So down here, I have a long four foot drawer and beside it to the left, I have my level garage and to the right, I have a small garage for those two saw horses. Because of the narrowness of this trailer, I had to go with a vertical tool garage. And so that's why my large tool garage is vertical so I can actually get my two tools off, which are of course all set up. And this, uh, this bar right here is one of my very rare active restraints in the fact that it's basically a two-sided cabinet with a floating shelf. And I want to make sure that my 60-pound saw sitting on that floating shelf doesn't break off. So that rides there. I have two screws that I can put in, but frankly, I never put the screws in. That bar rides just fine. And then I can just take it out when necessary. Of course, you see the standard array of tape measures. Everyone seems to need to have five to ten tape measures, and I'm no different. Other than that, I have various hand tools ready to go that I'm able to find. I've been able to take advantage up here for my uh, DeWalt track saw tracks, the uh, two shorter ones, and T-squares, and, and this is also where my miter stand actually sits. Swinging around, I have basically a, a kind of a plumbing hardware store in the fact that this is where all my PEX lives and my PEX tools. I do a, a fair amount on my own jobs. Then down here, I actually have a hardware store. These are all pull-out drawers, and I have the Milwaukee organizers. I will show you just one to show you how it works. Utilizing the passive restraint system, I do have to lift up before I pull out. I have, I have taken advantage of the notch system and that piece of hardwood in there. When this comes out, I have my organizer ready to go. I can simply ride it forward just a little bit. That shelf is more than adequate to support that. And then I have full access to all the organized hardware. What you'll see in this trailer is that everything is labeled. That way I or anybody I am working with has no problem coming in here and finding exactly what they need. Over here I have my drawer bank three and this is my small tool garage. I have two laser levels. I have my Forstner bit set. I have my radio and back behind there I have several drops. On this shelf down here, now this shelf also is an active shelf. You can see that, I, again, it's a passive restraint system there. I can pull this out. This pretty much is all things drywall for me. And then down here on this shelf, I have door and window uh, material, picture hanging kit. I have my cabinetry kit over there. And here again, everything is organized. Now, the one thing I will show you, because this is not a deep dive, is one thing that I am very proud of, and that is this hardware store. So, Ron, when I first saw your video, it's about 20 minutes long, and you, you walk into that big space down there, that aircraft hangar, or the, the helicopter hangar, and you uh, talk 10 minutes about the philosophy behind your uh, orange mission trailer, and then you give us a 10-minute deep dive tour. In there, the one thing, out of all of it, which I was frankly amazed at, you know, I, was, I will gush, I'm a fanboy. One thing that I will say is I was so impressed when you opened your drawer that said hardware store and you had all those viewtainers all laid out. I was just, oh, I had a Tim Allen moment. And so I, I figured when I'm building mine, I have to have one of those. So I will show you that particular hardware store because I'm so prideful of it. So let me show you that. So there is my hardware store. Uh, certainly I didn't do the viewtainers. I found these jars for 50 cents online a piece, I think. And it's just amazing, the various types of hardware, whatever I need, it's, it's pretty much in there. I was always hurting for washers, and I knew I had a ton at, at the house, but I'd be on a job site, and then you would need just two washers to do something. So now I have all kinds of washers, and so I'm very, very happy with that. Nuts, bolts, whatever you need. So there's my hardware store. Thanks for that idea, Ron. That has saved my bacon way more than once. Okay, on with the tour. So for the rest of the doors, I do have a secondary hardware store with just some organizers, and then you see everything else labeled all the way down through there into my bottom drawer that has specialty, kind of overflow and, and specialty tools. 
I was, like you, able to take advantage of the end cap here, and I made a Vutainer storage, and here again, I have labels all the way down. And if we flip the corner, I have yet an additional hardware store. And utilizing uh, two or three different sizes of those types of jars, um, everything like self-drilling, here I have wood screws, construction screws. These things are more sheet metal oriented. Down here I have specialty screws and nails. And then because this trailer is so small, I have very little uh, deep storage. And so this is kind of like my overflow deep storage down here, all the way down to chemicals and glues and, and things like that. Into the nose of the cabinet, you see that I have uh, extra air hose, some extension cords, my blower I use on the job site frequently, two foot step. Three of those plastic sawhorses, my electrician's belt, my carpentry belt, a dedicated shelf that it can either hold my radio or this box here, which is my plumbing box. That's my grab and go plumbing for anything plumbing uh, repair or installation. A viewtainer shelf, uh, again, no viewtainers, but I was able to utilize that for chemicals. All up in the rafters, I have nowhere else to go with them, and so that's where all of my clamps are. And spider bits for hole saws, regular hole saw kit. I do have my 100 foot, 10, 3, 20 amp utility, or I think it's a Utilitech extension cord that powers the trailer. I have my 100 or 150 foot air hose there, and they all feed out that hose down there. I have my air compressor that lives on board permanently. And one other thing on this trailer are these cubbies. I am so pleased with these tool cubbies. I'll give you a quick run through on these. So the only air tool I have left on board would be the palm nailer and my roofing gun. And down here I have an 18 gauge stapler. That's it. Those are the only air tools I have. Otherwise I have the corded framer. I have all of my trim guns down here. So the 16, the 18 and the 23 pin. Because I am at max on my tool trailer here and all my cubbies, I had to come up with this kind of vertical or this horizontal separator so I could take advantage of the vertical space. I have some sanders and some sandpaper behind there. And then I have one of two corded tools, hand tools, and that's my belt sander there. Vacuum, two circular saws, one cordless, one corded. The corded is used for masonry. This is again, one of those vertical separators, uh, you know, horizontal shelf. And that allows me to have both of my reciprocating saws Raptor saw back there is my power plane, SDS rotary hammer and a mixing drill. And then I have my joist drill on these bottom cubbies. I have a couple of flashlights. I'm missing one drill at the moment, but I have a drill and driver there, hammer drill and driver, hammer drill and driver, impact wrench and my right angle drill. Here is my drywall gun and drywall trimmer. Here's a 60 volt track saw. That has been again, uh, just an amazing tool. Regular seven and a quarter circular. Multi-tool corded and cordless router. Two jigsaws, one with a Collins coping foot, one with a flat shoe. 60 volt grinder, and then we're back to the nailers. Here I have drawer bank one, all labeled up. Drawer bank two, again, everything is all labeled. The other drawer bank two, again, everything is all labeled. Took advantage of creating a charging station. So I have the five chargers there and I have a double charger there and a single charger in back and then some loose chargers. Took advantage of this space up here for some battery storage. And actually uh, that's also my cordless electric staple stapler. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Then the rest of this trailer is just, uh, I love my magnets. I have magnets everywhere. So I have some grab and go tools there for just using around the trailer. Uh, various pens and pencils. And I was always frustrated at showing up on a job without a pencil. So I am not going to run out of pencils anytime soon. And various pads, hats, uh, headlamps. Cleaners for really kind of tidying up the rest of the job site when you're done. Just making sure when you leave it looks professional and a little bit of first aid. And then I have my big six foot drawer, which I am very, very happy with. It has pretty much everything else. All right, so Ron and the Smart Family, thank you very much for sticking with me. So that's my smart stuff from the miter box wing extensions to the pulp workbench, the semi-compact, I call it again, three by seven, and then the smart trailer itself. And because it's smaller than Ron's, I'm gonna call this the smart trailer because it is a small, small mobile awesome rolling toolbox. <laughs> I always forget that one. Hey, a little bit of bonus footage. I was walking back into my basement and I completely forgot about this one. So this is in my walkout basement 
And here I have actually built the three cubby system and I'm able to take advantage of these cubbies for all of the corded tools that are coming out of that have come out of my trailer over the past couple of years now. So I have a place for all of those. And as a bonus, I am building myself drawer bank two again and I put it on casters and it's going to take the place of that tool bench behind it. And so uh, a lot of organized storage, very similar to that trailer out there. And so I've been able to take advantage of smart inside. So awesome. Can't thank you enough for the ideas and all the work that you put in over a bunch of years to make all this design happen, because then all I had to do was buy $25 worth of plans and build it. And frankly, that was not difficult. It was time, but it was not difficult. It was uh, very rewarding, very pleasing, and I became much, much more friendly with a router. And for that, I am thankful. Well, you all take care. You all have a wonderful whatever you are having, and I hope you have a great time with any smart builds that you all have. Take care. If you enjoyed Steve's Smart Woodshop tour, be sure to give him a thumbs up and subscribe. Also in the comments below, be sure to ask questions. I know Steve would be happy to answer them for you. And if you want to feature your Smart Woodshop, then grab a video. You just use your smartphone, hold it horizontal, shoot in 4K if your phone has that capability. Just walk through, tell us about your shop, let us see your mug. Dropbox it to me. I'll edit it and get it up so we can all enjoy your ideas and where you've gone with these smart wood shop ideas. Thanks for hanging out today with Steve and his smart wood shop. You stay safe and have a great day.